The trade for Chris Paul in the offseason was seen as a brilliant move by Daryl Morey, but many question whether pairing two ball-dominant guards could work together. This question has been thoroughly answered with the return of Chris Paul as the Rockets rattled off a 15 win streak on incredible efficiency and Paul and Harden looked like they had played alongside each other for years. But we have seen amazing Rockets teams fall to the Warriors and Spurs in the playoffs in the past. Will this trend continue this season or are the Rockets a legitimate chance at going to the NBA Finals and even to a championship? This video will attempt to look at this question and discuss just what is going on in Houston to make this streak possible and this team so offensively talented. And the first piece of the puzzle to this success is the cornerstone of the Houston Rockets franchise over the past five years, James Harden. The potential and hidden superstar had plied his trade with the Oklahoma City Thunder before being traded in one of the most shocking moves by an NBA franchise ever in 2012. And since this trade, Harden has developed into one of the best offensive players and a perennial MVP candidate for the Rockets. In this time, he has scored over 10,000 points in his first five years and averaged over 27 points a game while doing so. Simply incredible numbers for any player. Harden's play in his first few years relied heavily on his ability to get to the rim, shoot the three, and draw fouls at a simply incredible rate. But with each season, Harden has gotten better and better not being complacent or happy with being considered a great NBA player. And he has now finished second twice in the MVP voting, a feat which would almost definitely drive him. Harden has been on the record as saying he believed he deserved the MVP in both seasons that he came second. And having a most valuable player award is a surefire way to solidify your status in the league and NBA history. But it wasn't until the arrival of Mike D'Antoni that we would see point guard Harden. A conscious decision by Dan and Tony to announce to the world and Harden that he was the true lead guard. And whilst Harden was definitely the primary playmaker for the Rockets before this decision, it had never been to a level with which Harden had the ball in last year. His usage rate increased 3% and he was also expected to create more for his teammates in a system that suited him perfectly. There was to be minimal post-ups or mid-range shots in MDA's system, instead they ran spread pick and roll over and over again and looked to get a three-pointer or a look at the rim for Harden. This is simply the perfect system for a guard like Harden, who has evolved into one of the most willing and skilled passers as well as a fantastic scorer. And Harden averaged an astounding 29.1 points and 11.2 assists per game on great efficiency for somebody who had the ball so much. And in this year, the race for MVP was split incredibly evenly between Harden and Russell Westbrook towards the end of the year, with Westbrook just eking out the award. But the arrival of Chris Paul has opened up the game for Harden even more. In the 16 games since CP3's return, Harden has averaged an astounding 33.1 points a game and 7.8 assists a game. The drop in assists was predictable, but Harden scoring this much more and on the efficiency that he is doing it with wasn't as obvious. Harden is shooting 46.5% from the field, whilst knocking down 4.2 threes on 40.6% shooting. Plus, he is only averaging 3.7 turnovers a game, a number which would be his lowest for the past three seasons. And the effects that Paul is having on Harden's game aren't obvious. They are incredibly subtle. Many would just assume that Chris Paul is creating for Harden, getting him a few more open looks from three and off of cuts. But what is really happening is that the two guards are sharing the load, saving their energy and stretching the defense more than ever before. Chris Paul has been bringing the ball up a court in a large portion of their games together, and this is one area where I think he has really benefited James Harden. In previous seasons, Harden would have to bring the ball up the court the majority of the possessions, and teams would rotate defenders onto him and press him full court. Doing this for 36 minutes a game is exceptionally tiring, and you could see the effects of it towards the ends of some games, and especially in the playoffs, when it resulted in turnovers and inefficient shots. And the Rockets couldn't simply give Beverly the ball to bring it up, as teams could then press Beverly once he stepped into the half court and make it difficult for him to pass, and then they would simultaneously press up on James Harden. This whole defensive process meant that by the time Harden got the ball, it could be late in the shot clock or it could result in a turnover from the whole process itself. Chris Paul solves this entire problem. He has one of the best handles in league history and brings up the court with ease. After all, it has been his job for his entire career as an NBA player. Teams can press up on Chris Paul if they want, but he is going to be able to handle it. And if you press up too much in the half court, he will simply blow by you. And in fact, Paul has been the most efficient isolation player in the league since his return. 
ruining players who press up on him too much by simply blowing past them and into the paint. But the most important part about all this is it allows them to get hard in the ball whenever they want in the shot clock, giving him time to work and operate while still fresh. But Chris Paul's value to this team runs further than just making Harden a more efficient player. He is an incredible offensive player in his own right, as well as being a good defender on the other end of the court. Chris Paul's numbers in his time at Houston have been identical to his last season with the Clippers. So in other words, incredible. He is averaging 17 points, 9 assists, and 2 steals per game, while shooting over 40% from 3, and a career-high 54.6% on 2-point field goal attempts. Paul has been devastating with the space provided by playing alongside James Harden and shooters like Trevor Ariza, Eric Gordon, and Ryan Anderson. This is a stark comparison from his days in Los Angeles when he had to play alongside Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, and frequently a poor three-point shooting small forward. Regularly, JJ Redick was the only player on the floor with Paul who could shoot the three at an elite level. And whilst the lobs to DeAndre and the pick and pops with Griffin created good looks, the spacing wasn't anywhere near the level it is in Houston, and required CP3 to execute perfectly just to create decent looks. Surrounded by Harden, Ariza, Anderson and Capella in the starting lineup, with an array of three-point shooters to blend in off the bench, Chris Paul has as much space as he wants. Coming off of a pick and roll screen from Capella, you can see Paul easily get into the paint and put the opposition defense into a complete bind. They simply can't afford to sag into the paint off of any shooters, but if they don't, then Chris is getting to the rim or throwing a lob to Capella. It simply isn't possible to win against this offense. They are going to get good looks, and Chris Paul is going to do so with incredible precision every possession. And we have seen this before in past seasons. During the regular season, it always looked as if Harden couldn't be stopped in this kind of offense. But then in the playoffs, teams overloaded him and gave him the mid-range shot, whilst limiting the three-point attempts and looks at the rim. And Harden struggled somewhat to adjust and forced bad shots at the rim and from three, or poor passes that were easily telegraphed and picked off. Daryl Morey and Mike D'Antoni will be hoping that Chris Paul's mid-range game can solve a lot of these issues. If teams want to give Chris Paul the mid-range shot, he will take it, over and over again. Paul has been one of the best mid-range jump shooters in the league over the past five seasons, and this will prevent teams from disrupting the Rockets' offense to the same extent as in previous playoffs. Plus, having both Harden and Paul will prevent teams from simply pressing one player the whole series in the playoffs and exhausting them over six or seven games. The two will likely share the load and create for each other, resulting in a more efficient offense for the entirety of the game as the two superstars remain fresh. And whilst all the players on the Rockets are benefiting from the arrival of Chris Paul and the wizardry of James Harden, one player in particular is thriving with all the space and passing. Clint Capella has simply blossomed under this offense. I mentioned him previously as one of the most underrated players in the league, but since that video he's gone from strength to strength and gotten even better. In just 25 minutes a game, Capella is averaging 14 points, 11.3 rebounds and 1.8 blocks a game and doing so while shooting 70% from the field. These numbers are through the roof, and his advanced stats have followed, so much so that Basketball Reference's MVP tracker currently has him ranked 7th in the entire league. And whilst he definitely hasn't been the 7th best player in the NBA, his importance to this Houston Rockets team cannot be underestimated. Capella is the perfect big man to run in pick and rolls with Paul or Harden. He dives to the rim with great speed and has an awesome vertical leap and wingspan to catch any well-timed lob to him for easy points. This threat is what makes the whole offense tick. And if Houston had a lumbering, old, unathletic center, they wouldn't be anywhere near as good as they are now. And on the defensive end, he provides the rim protection that they so desperately lack against bigger centers and grabs the rebounds to end possessions. His value to this team is strongly reflected when you look at the point differential of lineups featuring him. Lineups that have Harden, Paul, and Capella have a point differential of 10, a rate that would equate them to the number one seed in most years. And if you remove the lineup that plays Tucker and Capella alongside each other, this number jumps even higher. But that is not to say that Tucker is a bad player at all. And in most lineups with him at the power forward, the Rockets are quite strong. But the four lineups that the Rockets have run with Tucker at the five have been simply incredible with the Rockets have a point differential of 57 with Tucker as a small ball 5. And while the sample size is quite small, with only a game's worth of possessions featuring these lineups, this is very promising, and something that I think D'Antoni is aware of and would be saving for the playoffs. 
He has pulled these lineups out only when the Rockets are trailing by large amounts, and it has been spectacular to watch. With all five players being able to switch and using the years of experience on their roster to pull off complicated defensive rotations and lock other teams down. Then, on the other end, they have shooting and competent passing at all five positions and allows for Harden and Paul to have maximum spacing and absolutely destroy defenses on that end of the floor. But can this team take down the Warriors and the Spurs? The first issue is the Spurs, as I think they are the likely candidate to meet each other in the second round of the playoffs. And whilst the Spurs roasted the Rockets last year, I think that the gears will flip this season. The Rockets will simply be able to better execute their game plan and stretch out a Spurs defense which has some slow, older big men in older Gasol. And I cannot see Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili or Patty Mills being able to guard Chris Paul or James Harden at all. Then if they pull this off, only the Warriors would lie between the Rockets and their first trip back to the NBA Finals since 1995. And I think this series would be closer than people think. PJ Tucker, Trevor Ariza, and Luke Mabara Mute are all serviceable at guarding Durant and can rotate the duties of guarding him. And the Rockets' own death lineup is probably one of the only ones in the league that can keep up with the Warriors offensively. But even if they don't pull off a historic upset, the decision to trade for Chris Paul has been validated, and the Rockets are one of the best teams in the entire NBA. And that is something Daryl Morey, Mike D'Antoni, CP3 and The Beard can be very proud of. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more NBA videos in the future. And let me know what you think of the Rockets in the comment section below.